So you're probably learning the golf swing. You're probably trying different things in your swing. Have you ever wondered how interesting it is that two people can see the same thing in very different ways? That's the difference between perception and reality. Today we're going to talk about the difference between the perception of Mo Swing and the reality of it. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm going to hit it well, I know I'm going to play well, I know I'm going to have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. So I thought I'd start by telling you a quick story of a company called Natural Golf. Now I was heavily involved with this company back in the early uh, late 90s and early 2000s and back in this time period you know I would met Mo in 1994 and Natural Golf kicked off in that same period of time. Natural Golf hired Mo Norman to be a, a somewhat of a spokesperson because what Natural Golf was teaching was very similar to the mechanics of Natural Golf and eventually the two came together and you saw the Golf Digest article in 1995 where Natural Golf and Mo Norman were, were in the same talking about in the same context the golf swing of Mo Norman as a natural golf swing. So I don't want to give it into all the details of what happened with this company over the years but Natural Golf kind of put Mo Norman on the map and they put his golf swing on the map as a single plane swing. But here's what happened because I was, I was involved with the company for many years is that the swing, the way it was taught, and the perception and the reality of that golf swing changed. How does it change? Because we learned more about Mo's swing. We learned not only what it looked like he was doing, but what he was actually doing in the mechanics of the swing. And that's where I kind of come in because my goal, and, and this is where, where I am basically have, have built the name for the single plane swing with Graves Golf, is my goal is to bridge the gap between the perception of a swing and the actual reality of what's going on. I want to talk about some of the fundamentals here that you may have heard and some of you out there may be past natural golf people that un understood natural golf and learned natural golf and look natural golf did a fabulous job of teaching most fundamentals. I want to take that one step further with you here and talk about the reality of exactly what's going on. I like to know exactly what's going on. Why? Because then I can practice the model perfectly. Well, let's talk about some basic principles. Now, I'm going to talk about the natural golf fundamentals here, some that I agree with and some, it's not that I don't agree with the fundamentals of natural golf, it's that I think they can be clarified one step further. Let's just go through those, some of you that, that have some experience here and I'll, I'll tell you what they are. The first thing was the natural golf single plane setup. And now look, I'm going to grab a different club here. This is a four iron. Let me grab a six iron here just so you can see it easier. We all would agree that Mo Norman set up where the club was aligned with his trail arm, right? So we all see that, and that's, that's pretty obvious to see. So that's what we perceive. We see the single plane alignment, right? That's great. So that I agree with. We need this single plane alignment. It's very clear that the club is lined up with Mo's trail arm. The lead arm is visible above that trail arm. And then obviously there's some characteristics to the address where the club lines up with the lead arm. We can go through all those fundamentals. So there's, there's a very important fundamental here. Now how he did that is where I have some differences with Natural Golf. Because Natural Golf said he used a palm grip. Don't agree with palm grip. Here, let me explain why. And you can review, you've seen some of my videos on the YouTube channel and you can click on those videos and watch. I go into the palm grip in extensive detail, but Mo did not grip the club in the palm of the hands. And I know what you're going to say to me. You're going to say, well, Todd, I watched this video. Mo talks about the palm of the hands. Yeah, Mo talked about it, but this is where the perception and the reality come in. I'm going to show you where Mo gripped the club, and you watch him from this point forward, and you're going to see this. So when I grip the club like this, and I can use 10 finger or overlap. I want you to look at that for just a minute. 10 finger or overlap. Do you even see a difference there? 10 finger, overlap. Tiny bit of difference. All right. So it's really not, I'm not a fan of 10 finger to be honest with you. I like to overlap, but both grips work. Now what, I'm, what you're not seeing me do here is change the rotations of my hands. So what I don't want you to do is get this thing where you're holding it in this palm of the hand here 
that's where you run into problems. So let's just go through here what I look for in the proper address and how I create the single plane. Now, there's a lot to this. I could probably spend 30 minutes, matter of fact, I got a golf school starting tomorrow, and I'll spend 30 minutes in that golf school getting people to have the ideal perfect alignment. Let me explain what this is. You can't just grab the golf club. See, this is where people, this is where the perception, the reality, this is where it get, gets mixed up. And if I could run up to the camera right now and scream at you, I would want to do that. And here's why, because this is so important to you getting this right, is that you can't just grip the club and say, I got it in the palms of my hands, I got it. It doesn't work that way. Here's the way it works. You have to get the body position to match the arm position in order to get the hand position correct. You have to get everything right. So let me face you and we'll start like this. And I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna face you, I'm gonna produce the right address position. So I'm gonna produce it from this angle, then I'm gonna turn down the line and I'll be right into a single plane. So watch what I do. So the first thing ha that has to happen, you gotta get the lead arm correct. Now what's the function of the lead arm? What is the function of this arm? Well, this arm, it rotates with the body and then the hand hinges this direction. We produce this angle, right? We all know it has to do that, right? So we go like this. We produce that angle. Well, that means I got to hold the club in the proper part of the hand to achieve that. If I get the club too high into the hand, I can't achieve that angle. All right. So let's just get that hand on there correctly. So now I've created an alignment. There's the first alignment I have, lead arm, in the proper position of the hand. Now watch this. I'm going to put the club beneath my nose, not over here. I'm going to tilt my body. Look what just happened. See my hand lowered? I'm going to bring this hand up. I'm going to overlap. And notice the hand, it's in a rotation. I'm not coming in on top, I'm in a tilt. So my hand comes from underneath. And so this underneath feeling, and I wrap that thumb in there. Now look, you see how I have a nice alignment here? This arm, Mo called this the rod, Mo called this the claw. And now watch this, I'm gonna scoot, show you down the line. And look, the club is in a perfect single plane alignment. And why was that? Proper lead hand position, proper tilt, proper trail hand position proper alignment. And let me tell you something, grip size really had nothing to do with that. I'm not saying don't get grips that fit your hands well, but I can do that if I'm holding a shaft, a skinny little shaft, I can get the same exact alignments. So it's not grip size that's helping. You need a grip that doesn't slip out of your hands, but I want you, my, my point here is, it's the position of the body, the position of the arm, the, the tilt of the body, because in the rotation of the hand that create all these proper alignments. There's, there's the genius of Mo, but you see what I'm saying? It's not just about how you grip it. So I just produced a single plane address for you. Now let's go a little further here. So now that I have my single plane address position, which I think we'd all agree there's Mo at address, okay? Now let's talk about some of the fundamentals that Natural Golf talked about. One of them was wide stance. So take a wide stance, part of the address position. What, what happened though, when you watch Mo hit balls, and you can watch plenty of video, he had a wide stance with a driver, but when he hit irons, he had a more narrow stance. So I don't necessarily disagree with the wider stance. However, I think the stance varies based on the club you're hitting. So see how I've refined this a little bit? I've taken this fundamental, Natural Golf said, take a wide stance, and I've said no, wide stance with a driver, and you gotta know what club you're hitting to get the proper stance with, with the club you're hitting. Once again, refining that fundamental. All right, so wide stance. Another one was, and this is a big one for me, and this is what Natural Golf taught. They taught a fundamental called face the ball at impact. Okay, now, do I hate that terminology? I don't know, because here, watch this. If you look at me at impact, I'll do this from two different angles. I'm gonna set up to the golf ball here in a single plane. I'm gonna take it back, I'm gonna come down. Now look at me at impact. I am facing the ball, right? I am purely facing the ball. I like that feeling. Matter of fact, I feel that way when I'm hitting golf ball. So my perception is yes, I am facing the ball. All right, now, this is, this is the most important part of the video, so don't miss this part. Scroll right forward to it, watch this. If I look at, if I measure this, and I have measured this, so I go to my impact, and I measure pelvis rotation and torso rotation, my pelvis is open 30 to 35 degrees, and my torso is open 25 to 30 degrees. So my body's actually open, but I feel like I'm facing the ball at impact. All right, 
That's where it gets super, super complicated. Here's why. Because what people did when Natural Golf taught face the ball at impact, and if you're one of those guys, you know what I'm talking about, here's what people did. They stopped turning. They would do this. They'd take it back and they'd just slide into the ball. They'd, it'd look like this. They'd take it back and they'd just slide like that. They'd stop turning. And it caused more problems of people sliding and not turning than actually what Mo was doing. This is what I want to crawl on top of that house over there and scream from the rooftops is that perception and reality are so different sometimes. That's why I spend my time measuring and defining exactly what was going on. Let me just go through what is exactly going on. Here's what Mo did. And this is a simple way to look at it and this is an easy way to practice it. The way Mo got to this position, which feels like you're facing the ball at impact when your body's actually open, what feels like that is all you gotta do is keep your, is turn, I want you to rotate back and rotate through, and you gotta turn, keeping the lead knee flexed and trail foot down. That's how you do it. So what you're doing is you're, you're creating a limitation. The limitation is rotated, but it's feeling like you can only go so far and you can get to that point which feels like you're very much facing the wall, which I like. I like that feeling, but it's, it's not a slide that's doing it. So let me hit a shot. And I'll show you, you're going to see me go right through the ball here and finish. And I'm rotating, but this is staying down and that knee staying flexed. And you're going to see that nice looking face the ball. And that shot's just exactly on line perfectly. That's how he did it, okay? So it was here, into the flex lead knee. I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning. I'm, I, I can't turn anymore. Foot's down, release. And, and that moment, which is impact is a moment, I feel like I'm facing the ball, but I'm not. All right, so that's very important. All right. Now, those are the basic principles that Natural Golf taught. I didn't hate them. I just thought they weren't refined enough so that when people heard them and practiced them, that they wouldn't get confused by them. So that's why I teach some very basic fundamentals. Let me just give you a quick review today on my basic principles of what I expect in a good, solid, Mo Norman single plane swing. First thing is this. You must get the tilts of the body correct. You must get the proper arm position, the proper tilt of the body, which allows for the proper arm and hand position. You can't get proper arm and hand position without the tilt. So now that creates the single plane. I have this nice alignment of the club and the arm. See that? That is the, that's the plane that the club's going to impact on. Now, it also has this lead arm alignment. See that? Okay. So I have this nice single plane alignment. My lead foot's turned out. I'm going to take the club back. And then as I swing through, I want the knees to stay flexed and the foot to stay down. Watch this again. And when I do that, when the knee stays flexed and the foot stays down, see that? I can actually rotate, but I'm stuck. I can produce rotation with my body. So here's the thing. You're not doing this. You're not taking it back and sliding. You're going back, you're moving into the knee, which is slightly into that lateral feeling of the lower body, but then you're turning. So it's a slight movement to brace yourself, and then it's a turn. My goal is to clarify things so you practice correctly. If you do this stuff right, if you practice correctly, and you match those fundamentals, you will hit the golf ball better. I guarantee it, but you gotta do it right. Get the grip right, don't get stuck on one perception. Match the model, Mo Norman, and you're going to be a better ball striker and a better golfer. And by the way, if you're enjoying the single plane content, don't forget, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and don't forget to like these videos. Thanks for joining me today.